And today we're going to talk about a huge topic. It's how to turn the tide against uncontrollable food cravings. I think every one of us can talk about this. You know, we've all had those cravings of things that maybe weren't so good for us or sometimes they got to the level of uncontrollable. And I know it is a personal story way back in the day when I used to be competing in contests, <clears throat> we'd have to diet for long, long periods of time. We really, you know, you're really in calorie deprivation. And sometimes we would deal with just like uncontrollable food cravings. I mean, I, I can remember uh, me and some of my friends being, you know, at, at a local grocery store and literally being moved to tears just from the smell because we we're in such a state of deficiency. But what we're going to teach you today is how you can overcome food cravings. You have to realize, and you know, I, I talked about that book, Salt, Fat, Sugar, or you can look at, read that book. First and foremost, just you need to get aware of how the hooks of the modern you know, food production has gone on. Basically, you got, this is what's going on in the world. You got these factories of companies, okay, a little making smoke, these little, this is a little factory, and they're developing, you know, products, food products, well, let's go this, food products that increase food cravings, because they discovered back in the 70s, when, you know, big companies are coming in, they realized that, you know what, it's a lot easier to sell more food to our customers that we already have than try and get new customers. So, if you look at Fast Food Nation is a great one. Um, you can read about how the chemistry started to develop. So all those weird things that you see in your food labels that you can't pronounce, a lot of them are designed to increase your food cravings and to hook you, literally addict you. You become addicted to those products. And the, the magic combo is fat, sugar, and salt. These three things, and you got to understand why that is, is because historically our ancestors, if you could get fat, sugar, and salt in your diet, you had a better chance of surviving. There were no plants producing, you know, stuff to hook your brain onto them. And you got to realize is, is we're, we got the deck stacked against you. So in order to deal with this, because you're going against biological evolution is you need to incorporate some strategies about how you can get control of food cravings. Now, I'm not here to say that you should stop eating all those bad things or whatever, those, but when you're doing those things that are doing damage to your health, that are shortchanging you from your goals or are creating situations that are virtually uncontrollable, I mean, don't you think you're worth finding out how to deal with it? Just by knowing you're going to be in a different place because you're going to realize, that, wait, wait a second, I'm having a food craving. Is that me? Or is that some guy in the chem lab that is hooking me on that product? And I really want you to think about this. And I've dealt with a lot of people with eating disorders and food issues and obesity and stuff like that over the years. Our whole team has. And what you can say is this. Getting control of your food cravings is the difference of achieving your physical goals or not. If you're caught in this, and I, I, I'm, I'm no different. Keep in mind, if I don't do the things that I'm going to suggest to you, I'll be in the same boat. I'm biologically the same as you are. You know, the bottom line is, is I will go to those foods that aren't serving my process of healing health and high performance. So what's the strategy, Wade? What do we need to do to combat food cravings? Number one, remember our bucket theory. Keep in mind, you know, we went back to an earlier lesson about the bucket and, you know, how much of these resources you have available in your, your bucket. The first strategy is, number one, you want to make sure that you have lots of vitamins, minerals, enzymes, probiotics inside your system because food cravings are caused by chemistry. They're also caused by bad bacteria. Bad bacteria, what they do is they hook into your nervous system and they basically start telling your brain that you're hungry so they can get more, su more sugar, more fat, or more salt. And it's not like the salt that we naturally got back in the old days. This is salt that is, you know, thousands of times more than we need. And it's not the salt that our body works best on. So sometimes the bacteria. So taking regular probiotics so that you have that 80-10-10 terrain optimized. 
That's number one, the principles of bio-optimization. Number two, you need to have regular, frequent meals. And a lot of people struggle with this when they go, wait, I want to lose weight. What do you mean? I need to eat more? Yes, you need to eat more good things. Look, I, I always laugh. People talk about the glycemic index. They talk about carbohydrates, stuff like that. Look, nobody has ever gotten fat from eating apples or carrots or bananas. You could eat 50 bananas or 30 bananas. There's someone out there that has a 30 bananas a day. You're not going to get fat from this stuff. What you will get fat from is fluctuating your blood sugar a whole lot so that you have big peaks and valleys by taking simple processed foods inside your body, by you know, taking too many antibiotics that throw off your bacteria levels without taking probiotics. That's going to cause more food cravings. So what we suggest is you want to eat regularly. Try not to go more than three hours. Try not to go more than three hours without having a snack. That keeps your blood sugar stable. You see, when you take a simple processed sugar, you know, the ride up is a lot of fun. You sit down at the coffee shop. You have that triple, double fat, extra hot latte with the sweet and the sugar and the caffeine and all. I mean, woo, the ride up is a lot of fun. But then as your body goes into like assault mode and starts releasing insulin and all these chemicals, what happens? You release too much of it because we're not used to those things. And then your blood sugar crashes and then you're down here. And this is you, right? This is you with an unhappy face. You're angry, you're tired, you're acidic, you're feeling lousy. So what's your brain say? Well, you know what, dude? If you just have one of these little drinks here, you're going to feel a lot better. So guess what? You walk by the 7-Eleven, pick up anything out of the sparkly aisle, I call it, and boom, you're riding the train back up. Then you hit here. And, you know, you, you had too much to do today. You had to pick up the kids and all that sort of stuff. So now you go five hours without eating. And you come back down here and you're like, oh, my God, I'm so hungry. You know, and you stop into the fast food place and you have the, the double cheeseburger and the French fries and the ice cream on top and the soda. And then, you, you know, you get out and you're feeling all blown. And you're like, oh, what happened? What happened is you got hooked on the chemical train. So you want to have regular frequency meal, no more than three hours. That was one of the rules in bodybuilding. That's how we survived low calories. And what's interesting about bodybuilders is they all get lean. Every one of them. Some of them do high fat diets, some of them do high protein diets, some do high carb diets, but all of them get into leanness. So they get those food cravings down. And it's largely because of this. Unfortunately, some of them do it in a way that, you know, exhausts their supply like I did early on, but I learned it. So that's the other thing. The other thing is preparation. Okay. So like we're in the studio here. We're doing the studio filming, a little behind the scene things. And as we do these things, I have little snacks. I have apples, I have nuts, I have you know plant-based protein bars, I've got lots of water, I'm taking my vitamins and minerals, I'm taking my enzymes and probiotics, so I'm assimilating everything, I'm moving my waste out of the system. So I'm, I'm staying even through this whole process and I encourage you to do the same thing in your life. If you're going more than three hours without this stuff, you're setting yourself up. And believe me, once you get hooked into these guys, we're done. You, me, everybody, we're both done. So the other thing is managing your social conditions. So, you know, we all love to connect with people. We all like to have a lot of fun and go to social events. I mean, you know, of course, what do they have at the social events? They have all the foods that taste great that kind of blow out the waistline or not do so good. So before you go to social events, make sure you have a, uh, a meal, largely if it has lots of protein and, and fats inside it would be great because that's going to have a high level of what they call satiety. And just so you know, you can look that up. Satiety index is basically how well the food works inside your brain. In other words, your brain will tell you when you've had enough of something. So if I eat a bunch of blueberries, at a certain point I go, I can't have any more blueberries. Or if I eat a bunch of potatoes, I'll be like, at a certain point, I can't have more potatoes. So if I have, what is this? Now, the idea of these chemical ideas or these chemical plants is to make products that have low satiety. In other words, your brain doesn't say stop eating. And what happens is we end up consuming, consuming a lot more empty calories. And a lot of social events have a lot of those foods because they taste great. So you want to eat before you go. 
You want to make sure you have a nice good meal before you go. And you can have a little nibble here or that sort of thing socially, but go in prepared. If you go in on one of these points, that's where the food cravings kick in and the uncontrollable eating. And that leads you to the de-energized state. So biological optimization. The other thing is, okay, you want to carry your enzymes. I carry a little, I got a little, I took a little can, a little Altoids can, and I threw away all the candy. And I, I carry it with my enzymes right in it. And so it just fits in my pocket. And before I eat anything, I make sure that I have my enzymes that I can digest and assimilate the food very easily. I also make sure I take enzy extra enzymes and probiotics if I do have a bad meal or at that evening before I go to bed. And I drink lots of alkalized water to help flush my body and stay hydrated. Hydration is key in dealing with food cravings because oftentimes food cravings are a result of dehydration and chronic dehydration. So if you look at the perfect storm, to just recap, the perfect storm is food cravings happen when you're tired, when you're dehydrated, when you haven't eaten in the last two or three hours. Those are the factors. Also, if you've been programmed uh, from television and advertisements, they bypass the conscious mind and program you for foods that you know, probably aren't good. You never, see an, you never see an advertisement for oranges or apples or stuff. You always see advertisements for foods that maybe aren't so good for you. So those are the things that you avoid. And then you want to make sure that you're eating frequently. You want to eat lots of plant-based foods, okay? High protein if you've got to go a little bit longer because, you know, high protein fats allows you to go longer. They have a high satiety index here that blocks your brain uh, from, you know, gives you that full feeling. And take our products every day. That's pretty much it. That'll keep you in the optimal zone. Now, keep in mind when you start on this program, of course, we recommend sticking with us for at least 90 days to go through this whole thing because if you're coming from one of those situations where we're on this yo-yo, what's going to happen is this little line as you start your program, let's say you start your program here. This is you up to this point. This line is going to start leveling out a little bit more. And when it does, you're, you're going to feel energized without those food cravings. And it's going to be so much easier to stay on your fitness and dietary program. So I hope you love today's lesson. I want to congratulate you for getting this far. You're really getting into it. We're a third of the way through. You know, stick around. Be sure to post your questions on Bioptimizers. We're happy to answer them. And, uh, you know, turn those food cravings around and get on the positive side of it. We'll see you on the next lesson.